right. Hello, my name is Casey Carte. I work at Intel in uh, the data center group. And today I'll be presenting uh, two main topics. Uh, this presentation was made in collaboration with Jessica Goldbrand, Mark McDonald, and as well as a slew of other people at Intel to help acquire this data and then bring it out here to the OCP community. Um, for today's topics, we're going to be discussing um, our thermal metrology testbed, uh, it's more like a best-known method, uh, for single-phase immersion and ways of testing single-phase immersion in natural law enforcement protection. And we'll also be di discussing uh, targeted flow. So uh, for the evaluation of natural convection heat sinks, uh, again, we're going to be looking at immersion flow tunnel and an example of uh, thermal evaluation. And then for targeted flow, I'm going to focus mainly on the efficiency heat sink, which we've already released, and I'll go more into that, as well as our new performance heat sink designs, and then the opportunities that that design presents for the OCP community and really just for the data center in general. So what are we talking about today? And it's really single phase immersion. So um, we have a couple of demos out there that I'll talk about, and some people keep thinking it's two phase, but no, we're just talking about single phase. Uh, immersion for, for this discussion. And so the reason why we care about single phase immersion is because it's been gaining traction over the years, uh, mainly because it offers the best in class PUE, it has really good, I mean, uh, it can capture all of the heat, it doesn't have any fans, it's just the recirculation pumps. Um, with AI workloads and everything, we're driving more and more power density, and it's become very, very difficult to cool that with air. So immersion is looking more and more attractive compared to previous years. Um, with all of this, there's been a need to determine uh, a way of characterizing the thermal performance of IT equipment in an immersion tank, like an immersion environment for single phase. Uh, the strategies that I'm presenting here are still in development. This is new stuff, really. Um, but we're presenting what we have so far in the OCP community to hope to get more help, feedback, and wider adoption. So to start with, I want to talk about the issues with testing the existing immersion tanks. So the ones that, when you think of single phase immersion, these are the ones that are out currently. So they have a few problems when we look to design IT equipment. So the problem is tank designs are generally unique. They have uh, flow inlets at the bottom of the tanks in various locations. And with this, it presents uh, different boundary conditions to the inlets of the systems and it affects the natural convection flows and, the, uh, and it causes recirculation and everything. Now the problem is that this causes is you can have an IT equipment that functions fine in tank A and in tank B it might thermal throttle. And that's because the, the boundary condition at the inlet might be different. Uh, makes it really uh, difficult to evaluate wh whether a, um, a heat sink is sufficient or even the whole server, whether we have sufficiently designed this. So the solution that we determined was to develop a common metrology testbed for uh, immersion system characterization. Um, this would allow us to have clearly defined boundary conditions, uh, well-defined flow conditions, so we know that, well, I mean, it's oil, so we're usually laminar, but we know exactly where the flow is going, and we can validate this against real systems to understand the system behavior. We could also understand uh, the impacts under natural convection, kind of a mixed convection, as well as the forced convection regimes in the tank, and this kind of helps cover the full spectrum of flow conditions that you might experience in a tank environment. So on the right here, we have a picture of the typical thermal stack. You've got your substrate, your dyes, TIM1, an IHS, uh, TIM2, and then your heat sink. And I'm in the uh, Xeon team, so everything that we deal with traditionally has a lid at the moment. And we measure thermal performance by measuring the, the case temperature, as well as the liquid inlet temperature and divide that by the power to get our thermal resistance. So on the left here, I have a picture of what we're calling the immersion flow tunnel. So this fl flow tunnel we've been using over the years to characterize our immersion heat sinks, which I'll discuss in the next slide, um, and consists of several different components. So the components that you see here, it's got a inlet plenum, a flow tunnel chassis, and things that sort into that chassis. So the inlet plenum, uh, can be used and tied to some sort of pump to pump immersion flow into it. So what we often do in the lab when we're trying to characterize some sort of uh, immersion heat sink is we have a flow sensor tied to this tube that forces flow into the flow tunnel chassis. Uh, well, I mean, the sensor doesn't, the pump does. 
And so we know exactly what the flow rate of the fluid going through the immersion heat sink is. And we also know the temperature. And that way we can test forced convection of the heat sink. Uh, it makes it a lot easier when we're doing our uh, modeling. So into this flow tunnel chassis is a stack of various components. We have the approach tunnel. You'll notice in the red section, uh, the, it blocks the fluid bypass around the heat sink. It's only going into the heat sink center. Um, and it's relatively long. We wanna make sure that the flow is fully developed uh, before it gets to the heat sink that we're trying to test. Uh, the heat sink is on one of our engineering test boards traditionally, and we have a sample cover. Hello? Oh, sorry. That goes over the top and uh, that prevents any bypass, and we keep the, the, the distances about similar to what you would expect in a server. So we can better characterize the heat sink in forced convection, and in natural convection, we can remove the plenum and just leave it open to the tank environment, and we can be sure that we're in near natural, pretty much natural convection conditions and characterize the heat sink there. On the picture on the right is our 1U immersion optimized heat sink for our uh, uh, Eagle Stream platform. And <clears throat> so here's an example of that heat sink that I just showed of the thermal performance. You can see it's natural convection, so as the power increases, our thermal resistance decreases. Uh, and this is what we're used to seeing. Uh, in forced convection, we see that uh, we're not as sensitive to power, especially as you get over one liter per minute. We see that your thermal resistance is about the same, but it gets much lower. Like as soon as you start forcing fluid through the system, we get much better cooling performance. So that got us thinking, what if we start forcing flow through the heat sink? So we just talked about characterizing a natural convection, which is very important for heat sinks as well as other components in a system, but what about forced convection, or in this case, targeted flow? So here we have a lot of things. Um, on the upper right-hand corner, we have your traditional immersion tank with a, with a twist. So in a traditional single-phase immersion tank, fluid is pumped into the bottom, and then it rises to the top, and then it falls over a weir or something, and then goes through a heat exchanger, and then back to the pump, and it continues that cycle. The important thing to note that it's not really undergoing any sort of forced convection. It's, I like to think of it as sort of stirring the tank. It's keeping the, it's a way of getting the heat out of the system and keeping the, the temperature of the fluid relatively uniform throughout the depth of the tank. With targeted flow, we worked with several tank vendors uh, to design tanks to have a topside manifold. So this topside manifold allows IT equipment to be plugged into it. Think of it as sort of what you get for with direct-to-chip, except you can lose, uh, you don't have to use dripless connectors, it can drip into the tank. And you can con connect your heat sinks directly to it. So that would be the blue line here. So you take the outlet, the pump, and pump it directly to the heat sink. So on the left here, we have our efficiency heat sink. Now this has uh, just been contributed offers a thermal resistance between the case and the liquid inlet temperature of about 0.055 degrees C per watt. Now, this heat sink's about 50% better, uh, oh, sorry, no, this heat sink is quite a bit better than a natural convection, and it, this is using the same uh, thermal test vehicle. So in natural convection, it, it was, it's about twice as good, I would say, um, and it offers almost no flow impedance uh, in this design that we contributed. So any of the impedances come from, uh, honestly, losses for delivering the fluid to the heat sink. So this is very similar. All of these targeted flow uh, concepts are similar to the gravity flow that, uh, that one of our Shanghai team is working on. So the one in the center is our performance heat sink. So this heat sink is where things get really interesting. So we have a size CL of about 0.027 degrees C per watt, depending on your flow rate. Um, this is not the same TTV, so it's not directly comparable, but we can say that it's about three to four times a performance improvement to a standard natural convection heat sink. So it gets really, really good. Um, this heat sink offers relatively low impedance, but we'll go into that in the next slide, uh, flow impedance, while offering that high performance. Uh, this heat sink is uh, an Intel-specific design that you see here. Um, that offers the best performance with the lowest pressure drop. It could be used on Intel Xeon products um, or in, anything that you, is used with an Intel Xeon product. So here's some specifics uh, about the design. 
So uh, if we look at our case temperature and our thermal resistance, um, below one liter per minute, things get worse dramatically. But at one liter per minute, we start uh, seeing huge gains or huge reductions in our thermal resistance. So we worked with tank vendors to target around mm, two liters per minute. Uh, it, once you get beyond that, it, it, you, as you see, you get diminishing returns. Uh, and at two liters per minute, we're getting a thermal resistance of uh, it's 0.02 something. Um, and our case temperature is sub 60 degrees of the 40 inlet temperature. Now the data that you see here was uh, done in our Jones Barn lab in PAL4. Uh, the thing to note is our pressure drop is quite low. This, again, this is our efficiency heat sink uh, with the efficiency. With the performance heat sink, it's even better. This is the one where we have the very good thermal performance, sorry. Uh, our pressure drop is higher, uh, whereas the other one, the pressure drop was so low I had trouble measuring it, honestly. This one, uh, at two liters per minute, we're getting close to, we're sub seven kilopascals. But to be honest, at that pressure, you're, you're looking at fitting losses and losses through the tubes. So the impedance of the heat sink doesn't add that much to your pump power. In fact, we think uh, the pump power is about less than one watt per socket. Uh, again, not including any fittings and distribution loss losses while getting excellent thermal performance. So this offers three times the improvement over natural convection uh, or a little more depending on the flow rate that you're targeting. Uh, unlike the efficiency design, we're a little more sensitive to flow rate. Uh, and you can g do uh, all sorts of applications with this. So the things I wanna talk about uh, references some of the demos that we have out there. So this isn't just a point of concept. The performance design that you see here is one of our Intel reference designs. Again, that can be used under license with Intel products. Um, we've worked with multiple tank vendors who are launching products within the next two quarters that are widely available uh, so they can use these designs to cool their systems. Several kilowatts per systems, not just your standard spread core. So you can use these in all sorts of products. Um, we have, just to show the performance cooling capability, we have a demo in our own booth, an Intel booth, and if you have any questions, I'll be there tomorrow as well where we're powering two Orcs Corner, which is a Birchstream AP uh, Grand Rapids uh, TTV to over 1,000 watts each. Could have probably put a little higher if I just added more DC power supplies. Um, this is to show off the potential that can be done, not with our necessarily our Grand Rapids product, but any product, whether it be for AI or, or all those compute applications. We have another demonstration. Uh, uh, with a functional Birchstream system. So uh, this Bir that Birchstream system has Granite Rapids CPUs running at 500 watts, a high core count skew. Um, and that's uh, in a summer tank, whereas the one in the Intel booth is in a GRC tank. Um, this one with the 500 watt uh, CPUs is a functional system, unlike the TTVs. And the goal of this one is to illustrate that now that we're getting such low thermal resistance and single phase uh, immersion, not only can we do really dense systems with a lot of compute, but for those systems that don't really need that sort of uh, cooling potential, we can start raising the inlet temperature. In fact, we raised it all the way to 70 degrees at the inlet to the cold plate. So that means your inlet fluid temperature is 70 degrees, your outlet is 70 something, it's, it's closer to 80 degrees at the outlet. So this has a lot of potential applications. Uh, the things that people usually get immediately excited about is no chillers. So you can cool a 500 watt CPU in a single phase immersion tank, get 100% heat capture without chillers. Uh, the other exciting thing is the heat reuse uh, potential. So once you get above 60 degrees Celsius, then that fluid has enough energy to be usable, to be sellable for all sorts of district heating and other applications. In fact, there was a presentation that, that was done a few weeks ago that we wanted to include, but they only gave us like one immersion slot. So we're trying to pile it all into one demonstration here. Um, we're calling this heat reuse potential with single phase immersion coupled with targeted flow heat sinks, uh, HTI, so high temperature immersion. And this is for anything greater than 60 degrees Celsius. Um, so again, the main potential for this is the opportunity to have uh, heat reuse applications as well as being able to cool our CPUs in any climate and you're not as sensitive to, uh, basically we use dry cooling. So you're not as sensitive to water restrictions and things like that. 
So in summary, um, we looked at two main things today. One is a way of characterizing the thermal performance of heat sinks in um, uh, natural convection as well as forced convection using our uh, immersion flow tunnel. This way, this offers uh, clearly defined boundary conditions and the ability to compare the thermal performance for our thermal solutions among different tanks and vendors. And that way we all know that we're testing the same thing. The other thing that we discussed today is targeted flow. So it's a little different than force convection. We're putting the fluid directly to the chip. The, the important thing to note is it's not a POC. This is ready for deployment. There are tank, tank vendors here you can talk to that will sell you tanks, targeted flow tanks for this quarter or next quarter. Um, for heat sinks, we have the efficiency design, which was given to OCP. Uh, we have the performance design, which is available under a zero cost license uh, for all Intel platforms. Um, and then the last thing that I want to talk about or just reiterate is with this targeted flow heat sink, we get such low thermal resistance that we can enable dry cooling and uh, heat reuse. So my main call to action is come join us, collaborate for OCP and uh, the various projects. Uh, the things we want to talk about is, again, targeted flow demos on the Intel booth and Castro booths. Please take a look. Uh, they're, they're really fun to make, honestly. Um, and then you can join all these working groups here. So sustainable immersion, or building a wet materials list, as well as the generate the guidelines for signal integrity and immersion. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Ah, uh, and then we have, uh, so the question is, how do we uh, compensate for non-formal uh, temperature distribution issues within the actual chip, right? So if you have like a, some sort of accelerator or something with chiplets or HPM and such. Um, with targeted flow heat sinks, it can be used uh, with a, a bare die or on a package uh, for, for these. And then it's, it's the same problems that you would have with a direct to chip solution. Um, so if we were to look inside our heat sinks, it's a uh, similar type design. We used a Skype technology. And so if it's been solved for direct to chip solution, then it should work fine for a targeted flow solution. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, so I'll catch up with you offline, so. Uh, no.